Okay, today we're going to be doing a demonstration flight with the headwall co-align sensor that is also equipped with a puck light LiDAR on the back here. Uh, this is a hard mount system um, and it is attached to the DJI M600. Uh, so first things that you notice is we have two Ethernet cables coming out of the sensor, one for the SWEAR and one for the VNIR. There are two sensors um, that are embodied in this white enclosure. Uh, the two Ethernet ports um, go into this black box Ethernet switch and then we have the one gray cable coming from the switch into my computer and the computer is being powered via USB off the computer. We also have um, a TP-Link wireless hotspot. Um, this is so that we can have the tablet and the computer attached to the same wireless network so that we can send the flight plan from the computer to the tablet. First thing I'm going to do is launch my Hyperspec 3 software. The first thing that I look for is the bottom left corner. Uh, there is a GPS IMU status icon. Uh, if that is green, then we're good to go. If it is yellow, it means that uh, it doesn't have enough satellites or uh, it doesn't have a GPS lock yet. Uh, and if that's the case, what I might do is I might um, you know, rotate the drone around, give it a little bit of motion uh, or excitation um, so that I can kind of gain that GPS lock. Typically we work our way top to bottom within the software, so we'll start with the live video tab. We'll launch that. Uh, and since we have two sensors here, we will actually click the sensor drop down menu and open up the SWEAR 640 live video and the Nano HS live video. Now we're looking at both live videos side by side um, and it looks a little dark and that's because the sensor is actually pointing into its own shadow right now. So what I will do is I will tilt it back and now we are looking down at our white reference which is fully illuminated by the sun. First thing that I want to do is I want to click this X hair button on both sensors and that shows me which uh, pixel this plot is displaying for and I want to make sure that I'm not in a dark region um, so I'll just click, we'll say here and here. And now I will um, adjust my exposure until my, um, for the Nano, I want to be looking for about 35 to 3800 counts. If I hover over the top of this uh, peak right here, it's telling me we are at um, about 3600. So I'm okay with a value of 3.4 for my exposure. Similarly for the SWEAR, we'll hover over and we're looking at 58 to 60,000 counts um, as our target. And here we're saying, seeing about 59,000, so we're okay with that as well. Uh, that's an exposure of 2.024. Um, so now that I'm happy with my exposure values, I can put the sensor back down. As a rule of thumb, uh, we want our frame period to be no less than 5.5 milliseconds. Um, so I will set that to that. And then now I'm looking at my distance to object, which I will set to 60, which is the altitude that I'll be flying at today. Based on the parameters that it is seeing, the uh, frame period, the distance to object, it is spitting out a suggested speed of 6.5 meters per second. I'll take that um, 6.5 and I'll dial back a little bit, uh, so that way I'm purposely slightly oversampling um, which will get taken away in the processing. Um, but this way, I'll set it at, we'll say, 6 meters per second, and that way, if I accidentally speed up a little bit from a gust of wind or something like that, um, I'll be okay, I'll have extra data instead of not enough. Um, and that way I won't have gaps when I go to do my final processing. So now I'll open up UGCS, and I have a predetermined mission here, which I have set my flight speed to 6 meters per second and uh, I can now upload that from the UGCS desktop version to the tablet. So I will now click Upload, click the little green check mark icon, and now we'll see it pop up on the tablet and it uploads from 0% up to 100%. Once it hits 100% and flashes green, uh, we are then good to go on the tablet. Okay, now we're going to go back into the Hyperspec 3 software where I can now close out of my live video tab. And then we're going to open up the, the GPS tab. Again, we're going to do this for both the SWEAR and the VNIR sensors. Okay. 
And now we will import our polygon file to both sides. We see it show up. We have our main polygon, and then this one actually has a small sub polygon for the tarp, which you can see we have placed out over there. And then we see this small little uh, white X icon that shows where we are relative to the polygon. It all makes sense, um, and so I'm happy, and I can close out of uh, the Nano GPS tab. Next, we're gonna move on to the Capture tab. This tab actually has both um, the Swear and the Veneer combined into one, uh, so we only need to launch it on one side because it's looking at both. Uh, and you'll notice it automatically pulls in the um, exposure and frame period that we determined from the live video. Um, and so we will set a folder prefix, so we'll give it a, um, a name of test for today. Frames per cube we set to 2000, that is our recommended number. Max number of cubes is zero, that means infinite. Um, and then our exposure and frame period, like I said, are already pre-populated. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do uh, a dark collection. So we will click this collect dark button. It'll append the name underscore dark to the end of your file. And then we're going to add on our lens cap. The lens is a magnet, so all you need to do is just kind of place it right and it'll snap right on. Uh, once we have the lens cap on, we can click the go icon, and then it asks me, is the lens cap on? Yes. And then it'll start its dark collection. It'll take 1,000 frames, just one cube, um, and it'll take about 5.5 seconds because it's 1,000 frames times 5.5 milliseconds per frame, which equals 5.5 seconds. Once it's done, it'll flash um, and then tell me it's basically done. So now I will click the Enable GPS Triggering box. And then we are ready to start our acquisition. So at this point, I will click Go. It asks me, is the lens cap off? So now I know to remove this. And then I say yes. If I'm outside of the polygon, which I am right now, I'll see this uh, pause icon illuminate. And at that point, I can close the, so the Hyperspec 3 software and disconnect from the sensor. Since we're running with a LiDAR, uh, we will want to make sure that we plug in our Ethernet cable from the LiDAR box to the Veneer port. Once you plug in, the LiDAR is streaming data um, back to the Nano uh, and saving it continuously. At this point, we can put the sensor out. Set up behind me, I have our calibration uh, reflectance tarp. This has three separate panels. Uh, the whole thing is a three by three meter square, uh, with each section being a three meter by one meter uh, portion. We have 11%, a 32%, and a 56% reflectance, and we will use that uh, in our post-processing to convert our raw data to reflectance. Um, also here we have this little yellow Trimble base station. It is the SPS 585. That is uh, used for our post-processing corrections as well. Um, as our base, the system is used as a rover, and then we import those files into the post-pack uh, processing system, and then it'll spit out an SBET, a Smooth Best Estimate of Trajectory, which is our high-quality uh, GPS file. Okay, once we have the drone and the sensor out in a safe takeoff location, we're gonna put our two sticks down to the middle to turn on the rotors. You can release once they engage, and then you're going to use left stick straight up to take off. The legs will automatically raise up after about 5 meters. We're going to raise up to a safe altitude, in this case about 30 meters. And then now I'm going to do my magnetometer calibration, which uh, needs to be done anytime you're in a new magnetic environment. Uh, and this consists of spinning in place for three full rotations each direction and each rotation needs to take at least 10 seconds. I'm 
Okay, that is the full calibration. At this point, you could either land and check that it took, or you can um, go right into your mission. Uh, and now we're going to do our pre-flight initialization. Uh, this needs to be done at the beginning of each time that the sensor is power cycled. Um, so this consists of a down and back as fast as you can uh, for 100 meters or about 10 seconds. And I'm going to raise up a little bit higher. And then full throttle and let it come to a complete stop again at the end. At this point, now I'm going to fly towards my first waypoint. My first waypoint is at 30 meters, so I'm going to bring it back down a little bit. And then you can start your mission. At the conclusion of the mission, it will stop uh, and tell you that the route has ended at this point with the high performance GPS. You should do that same pre-flight initialization at the end of the flight as well. This will help aid in your post-processing. So now I will fly forward again for 10 seconds or 100 meters as fast as I can. Let it come to a complete stop. Fly the reverse as fast as I can for 10 seconds or so. Let it come to a complete stop. And now I can put my landing gear down and then bring it in for a landing. Once you hit the ground, left stick straight down for about three seconds and that'll disengage the motors. At the conclusion of the flight, we're now going to disconnect the LiDAR. And then we're gonna re-plug in our ethernet cables. Gonna relaunch the Hyperspec 3 software. Open up the capture tab and click the stop icon. This tells me how many frames we've captured. <clears throat> and then now we can uh, click File Transfer. And this will have to be done on both sides, the sphere and the veneer. And now we can select the dark reference and then the flight tell it where to go for a download, so it'll by default be transferred to the C Nano Images directory, and then click Transfer. <clears throat> we want this Create Cube Images icon um, or checkbox selected, uh, and we don't need to worry about any of the other checkboxes. And then we will do the same on both sides. While we're waiting, we can also open up a web browser. And navigate to 10.0.65.51 colon 8080 for the, uh, to download the GPS files. The username will be admin. And then the password will either be password or on newer systems, it'll be the serial number, which you can find in the upper right corner. In the receiver status, INS status page, you can check the magnetometer. It says it was calibrated on 7-7-2021, which is today. So we know that the magnetometer calibration was successful. And then we can go into our data logging, go internal. Then it's, um, outlined by month, so we'll go to July 7th, default, and then we can select all the files from today and download the selected files. Our sphere is done downloading, um, the veneers 
almost there. It was a little bit larger because of the LiDAR data that was being stored to the veneer. Once it hits 100, um, this is when the PNG files are created. So you can see that we see the spinning icon. Once the spinning icon is complete, then all the PNGs have been made and we are done with our download. Close that of the software at this point. Wait for our GPS data to finish downloading and then we will be done with this mission. And once we're done with the GPS files, now we can turn off the sensor and the drone.